are the best. Yeah. Well, some of the royal court immediately, the that's not done with. 
What a wonderful idea! However, it seems that all of the men of the world are part of on vacation. Pity, those pesky laws, you know. Stay away from my daughter, Chancellor. There may be laws, but I hate for something painful, painful to hold me. Of course, I just hate What? Nothing to see here. Go back to your business. So, the adventure you have come for today is Jack. Not so far. I don't know all the adventures I need to go on. Really? You always seem to love going on adventures. I only really need to go on an adventure when I have everything I need right here. I guess that makes sense. Good. Well, that's the whole It just seems as though a little out of here for you not to want to go do something dangerous. As far as I can tell, Jill, there's nothing dangerous out there. It turns out everything <clears throat> we were afraid of is actually nice and friendly. Isn't that convenient? Jill, you're just overthinking things as usual. Remember when everyone was afraid of the giant? I remember how you made everyone but it turns out giants are friendly vegetarians. Oh, and remember how everyone was afraid of a wolf because paying rent is about the worst thing ever? And remember when everyone was afraid of Little Red Riding Hood because she turned out to be an evil witch? And remember how everyone was afraid the princess was going to melt because she, made, she was made of snow? There is nothing to be afraid of. Trust me, Jill. If there was anything dangerous, I would be the first to know about it. All right. Come on, let's all PC. OK, Jack. Well, she sure seemed pessimistic. That's why they go together so well. He always thinks everything's going to go so great, and he always thinks everything's going to go so wrong. They bounce each other out. I remember when he was head over heels in love with Little Red. Yeah, poor guy. He thought she was perfect until he found out she was a witch. And it's a good thing he found out before it was too late. <laughs> Speaking of Little Red writing, where have you been lately? I haven't stared since they so to this room your girl princess. Yeah, she sort of just vanished. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe she's plotting to ruin all our lives again. Oh, I doubt that. Why? Remember, remember how tem <laughs> temperamental and vindictive she is? Yeah, but how can anyone, yeah, but how can anyone be so te te temperamental and vindictive when everyone's so happy? What a happy, happy day we have all been blessed. writer, hasn't it? It's happened once before, but we got over it. This time it's different. And this is why the scene keeps repeating. Exactly. The only way to move on to the next thing is that the writer starts writing this. How is he's not even a writer anymore. Not a writer? What is he? A restaurant manager. Oh, what? He works in a restaurant. He doesn't write. So we're going to have to keep doing the same scene over Forever? Not necessarily. We think having a character communicate with him will get him back to writing again. <clears throat> and you're the meta. You can see past the play into everything else. You're the one that has to go and talk to it. But I'm just a candlestick maker. How would the writer listen to me? Because you come from his imagination. You come from the part of him that loves to create. You can remind him of what it was like. It's easy. No, it's not easy. It's actually a large part. Which is? There's a girl. A girl. She's affected his mind, keeping him from writing, holding him back. Why would she do that? Maybe she's afraid of what will happen if he moves on. Maybe he's afraid of what will happen if he moves on. What's going on? Why is it so Chara, look. What is this? 
Why is there a fifth crystal on the stage? It's the Metatora, the one we've been waiting for. I told you the meta was real. And now the meta has made it past the end of the scene, we can take her to the rider. How do I get to the lighter?